Hello! How's it going? I completely changed my plans about what this video was gonna be. Um, it was gonna be a vlog. I guess it's kind of a vlog. And it's not because I'm not just sitting down. I'm actually gonna be making some mac and cheese because I'm sick. <laughs> and it's 6.20 and I finally got out of bed. Okay, so you're probably wondering what the heck this video is about because I haven't done anything that is useful yet. I had my six month PET scan last Wednesday, posted a short about it. I figured that I should post this video sooner rather than later because in case that short kind of like freaks people out. So short's just talking about like the thoughts that I have that go through my mind whenever I have a PET scan. It's just supposed to be funny, but I got like some messages from people that were like a little concerned and they were like, oh my gosh, like, are you okay? Um, like, I'm, I didn't know that you went through this and it's just, it, it really was just supposed to be funny. Um, I know a lot of cancer patients have those thoughts and like obviously not thinking about those most of the time. But you know, when you have a scan coming up, you, you're just, those thoughts are gonna go through your head. They just, they kind of just have to. It's all part of it. <laughs> That's why I'm super thankful that I get my results really, really quickly. A lot of you guys know, I stopped taking my cancer medicine. This cancer medicine was supposed to increase my survival chances, prevent reoccurrence. So by going off these medicines, I'm at a risk, right? So this scan kind of made me a little bit more nervous than normal because I was like, what if this medicine has been helping all along and, you know, I just switched off of it and whatever, you know, you know how it be. So <laughs> one of the side effects of me going off, or I guess like an anti side effect of me going off is that like I go back to normal. So um, I have periods again. So that means that I am able to get pregnant. So my oncologist was like, hey, before you get your PET scan, you should really check and make sure that you're not pregnant because you know, this isn't something that really goes through people's minds when they do PET scans because most of the people we do PET scans on are way past the age where they can have kids. So no one really thinks about that. Just like make sure you're not pregnant before you get this scan. And I was like, okay, cool. So I have these pregnancy tests. I got these like cheap pregnancy tests on Amazon because I knew it was going to be around the time I was expecting my period when I was going in for this PET scan. Um, but I hadn't gotten it yet, so the day before my PET scan, I actually took a test, it was negative. Then I went to the hospital because I was like, all right, negative, I can feel good. I was like, I probably should have gotten my period yesterday or today, but I still hadn't gotten it. I go in, one of the guys I know fairly well because I basically have him every other time I have the PET scan. It's either him or this other girl. I even saw the other girl there, but anyway. He tried to stick the IV in my arm to give me the thing. This is the aftermath of that. Not his fault. He's actually usually pretty good. He didn't get it. And so then I was like, oh, this is the other one people tried. He's like, okay, like, I'm really, really sorry. He missed again. And like I said, my veins are so hard and there's only one person that has a perfect record of getting blood out of my veins. <coughs> anyway, he finally gets it in my hand. You can see the little prick. It worked perfectly that time. So, good job, dude. Not gonna say your name. Usually they have me fill out a whole form where it says like when my last period was and usually I'm like, October 2019, because that was like the last time I had one before I started the medicine, but Anyway, they didn't have me fill this out. They just had like a pre-filled out sheet of all my information. And so he's like, do you have any questions? I was like, oh yeah, so my oncologist wanted me to make sure I wasn't pregnant before I did this. Um, I did a test yesterday and it was negative, but like, do I need to do one here? And he's like, well, I don't know. Um, do you want to do one here? And I was like, well, I mean, if you think it's fine, then I guess I think it's fine, but like, is there like a really big risk or anything? And he was just like, well, I mean, this would be really early in the pregnancy. So 
this amount of radiation could be pretty damaging. And so I was kind of like paranoid at that point. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna feel better if I do it. And so he was like, okay, let me try to figure out how to get you a pregnancy test. So he goes and calls some people. It takes a while to come back. And then he finally comes back and he's like, okay, so we have an order for you to get a pregnancy test. You have to leave and you have to go to like this lab on the other side of the floor. Not that far, it wasn't that far, but like I had to leave the whole area. I leave and I go all the way to get this pregnancy test. He tells me to go to this desk and then the person at the desk calls nuclear medicine and they're like, okay, you need to go to this area. So I walk into this area, this other area and then I check in there and they're asking me like all these questions. They're just like, where are you coming from, girl? Like, you're not on our schedule, and I'm probably, like, inconveniencing a ton of people. I check in, I have to do the whole, like, insurance information thing all over again. The lady checking me in, she was like, are you having the surgery? I guess the way that it was phrased on the order was, like, pre-operation pregnancy test or something, and I'm like, no, I'm not having a surgery. And she's like, oh, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm having a scan, a PET scan. She's like, okay. She's like, are you sure you're not having a surgery? I'm like, yes, I'm pretty sure I'm not having a surgery. The lady that takes me back is like whispering to me. Like, like this is like some embarrassing test or something. I'm like, it's not really. It's just, just peeing in a cup, but whatever. Like, of the things I've had to do, this is so easy. And she's like, I can't like understand her because she's whispering to me. She's like, Let me go do that. All right, my water's boiling. Okay, so I do all of that. And I'm like, so when I'm done, what do I do? She's like, just leave the cup on the table over here. And I'm like, okay, and then I just leave? And she's just like, yeah, you can just go. And I'm like, okay. So I do that. I leave the cup on the table and I leave and I go back to like the original front desk and I'm like, hey, I'm back. And this like girl is getting tired of me at this point. I was like, I don't know the results of my test yet, but I'm done. So do I go back to nuclear medicine or what? And so she calls down. She's like, hey, I talked to the guy that's doing your scan. And he said, he's just going to keep refreshing your chart to see if those results ever come in. You can just go sit over there in the waiting area and he'll call you when they're ready. So I'm like, oh, if that's what he's going to do, then I can do the same thing because I have like the My Chart app and I can refresh it too. Because I'm like, I'm like 99, 98% sure I'm not pregnant. So I go back to where I was before with my nice reclining chair and everything. The other girl that sometimes does the tests, um, she comes back and she's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, great. And she's like... So your, your dye actually decayed? <laughs> I just think this is so funny because like they're putting this radioactive dye in me for this PET scan, right? And it, because it's radioactive, it decays. So they're like, it, de it decayed. So we're actually gonna have to send in a new order for your <laughs> more dye <laughs> because this took so long. And the other guy's telling me, like, I'm, like, apologizing because I know how busy their schedules can get and I'm probably messing up their whole thing because they usually have, like, you know, someone sitting for an hour, someone taking a scan, someone sitting, and they alternate or whatever. And he's like, actually, no, don't worry about it. The person that's supposed to be after you is stuck in traffic. So that made me feel a little bit better, but they're also probably lying, but it's fine. So I finally refresh the page and I get this. A negative for pregnancy. Great. He comes in about a minute or two later. He's like, hey, it was negative, so I can inject you now. And the entire time I still had like the IV in my hand. Um, and so then he comes back in. He's like, hey, your test results are negative. Apparently, your oncologist actually ordered this test like a while ago, and you were supposed to get it today, and we were supposed to know about this, but like nobody told anybody or something. Okay, so I get my, my dye and I lay there for 45 minutes. I go in for the scan, 25 minutes, super easy. PET scans, they're, they're fine, they're quick. They like pull you through once, 
and then they do like seven different sections. So for me, it's seven. I'm, I, I was wondering this time if it's like more sections if you're taller or like less sections if you're shorter because like they have to get like your whole body. So like they start and they're like, they start here. And they like, you know, three minute or whatever scan of you just in this position. Then they move you a little. They move you a little more. They move you a little more. They move you a little more. Seven times. It's always seven times for me. And then there's a whole da-ling, da-ling, and you're done. I'm not gonna show this. I'm just gonna do it. You guys know what it's like to strain noodles, right? Sorry, I really can't do two things at once. I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to do this, this kind of video. I know people like make videos all the time of them being like, answering questions while I cook dinner. Ow, I just burned my leg. <laughs> Water dripped on my leg. It's fine. I didn't burn it. I'm kind of being dramatic. This is why Gray is the one that cooks for us. Because, like, you know, I burn myself making Kraft mac and cheese. Where even was I in the story? Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the good part of the story. Ready for this? So I'm walking out. And he's like, all right, go down to the hall, make a left. That's where the elevators are. I'm like, great, thanks. And I get, like, this warm, intense feeling. And I'm like, I just peed my pants. What the heck? How could I not control that? And then I'm like, wait a sec. Did I really just pee my pants or did my period just start? I get to the car, you know, I do a little check and I'm like, yeah, it just started. If my scan was two, maybe even one hour early, later in the day, I would have known that I started my period and I wouldn't have needed to go through the whole pregnancy test thing, ordering more dye because it decayed, and all of that. <coughs> all of that. Right? So I get home. I, of course, go to Tropical Smoothie first. Now let's, let's get to the results of the scan, shall we? So this is... What I saw when I opened the PET scan results that came in, came in probably like an hour after I got home. So it says, in history is hormone receptor positive breast cancer, left. Um, it says stuff about the PET scan, what it is, the findings. It says no focal FDG update, suspicious for metastatic disease in the chest. chest abdomen or pelvis, stable appearance of lumpectomy changes, left breast, stable left auxiliary surgical clips with no pathological lymph node enlargement appreciated. Let's talk about what that means, <laughs> you know, because I'm a genius and can totally tell you what that means. I'm not a genius, but from what I can understand, they're saying there's no cancer in my chest, abdomen, abdomen, <laughs> Ad abdomen or pelvis. That's that's clear. Stable appearance of lumpectomy changes. My lumpectomy site, the site where they did the lumpectomy in the left breast, I'm guessing looks similar to a previous scan. No changes in that area. And stable left auxiliary, stable left auxiliary surgical clips with no pathological lymph node enlargement appreciated. So when they did the biopsy or like surgery or something of my lymph nodes, they actually put a surgical clip in there. I'm guessing that just means they specifically looked at that area and it looks fine. And you know, the lymph nodes aren't enlarged or anything. So everything looks good with the lymph nodes. Then it says similar mild anterior oral cavity or floor of mouth uptake. Uptake noted in the brain, heart, gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal and genitourinary tracts. Don't know what that last one is. Endometrial uptake is present, which is most likely fun functional. Endometrial uptake is present. I thought that was hilarious because like, I'm wondering if they could see that I was on my period before I even knew I was on my period. <laughs> I have no idea how detailed the scans are, if they can tell that, but I just, I thought that was funny. Um, the uptake on the floor of the mouth, they've explained to me before, when you swallow a lot, 
you can get like a lot of uptake in your mouth. The uptake that's in the brain, heart, gastrointestinal, gas, you know, I can't say the word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, in those places, that's normal because those are areas of high activity. So clearly they're, they're checking that, probably comparing it to other scans. They're saying it looks normal. And then, um, you know, best words that you can read on a report. Impression, no evidence of metabolically active malignancy. Usually when I get my PET scan results, before I even read anything, I look to find this. When I first opened it, I couldn't find this because I thought it was gonna be at the bottom, but it was actually like at the top. I actually read all the stuff that I just read to you first. And then I found that there was you no, know, the, the no active, no evidence of metabolically active malignancy. I'm like, all right, everything looks great, but I'm still a little bit nervous because sometimes when I get PET scans, the doctor comes back and is like, oh, we thought it was good, but then we found this and now you need to get another MRI. So, you know, I always have that in the back of my mind, like someone could find something else after the fact. So I'm like, I'm just gonna wait till I have my appointment with my oncologist. The next day I go talk to my oncologist. He's like, good news. Everything's perfect on your PET scan. Congrats. If you haven't seen the video on our other channel, Gray and I have some big news. We're moving to Alaska this summer. My oncologist and I are talking like, when you go to Alaska, you need to get Zometa still. When I get Zometa, I get pretty sick after, so my oncologist prescribes me a steroid to take the day of, and that helps me so I don't get sick. And um, this isn't like anywhere in the literature or anything, so he's like, if your oncologist in Alaska doesn't believe that the steroid's gonna help you, have them call me, I will talk to them. <laughs> and make sure they give you that steroid so you don't get sick. And then he made an appointment for me to go back to him in like October 2023. So that made me feel super awesome. I was walking out of there and I had like no plans to go back for over a year. If I was still on the medicine, I would still be going back every month because I would need to get the injection every month. And like, also I would still be having like horrible side effects that they would be trying to manage. But he's just like, so you don't have any problems anymore? I'm like, no, I don't have nausea. I don't have fatigue. I don't have diarrhea. I don't have a fissure anymore. That went away. I literally, like all my problems are solved from going off this medicine. He's like, that's great. You're healthy. I don't need to see you anymore. It also makes me feel really good that this is three years after my diagnosis. When statistics are reported about like people surviving however many years after cancer, it's always from your diagnosis day. So this is like technically three years for me, even though it's not three years after I finished treatment, it's three years from my diagnosis. So that means I've made it three years. Um, when you make it to five years, that's when it's like a really big deal. Okay, like you've made it past like a big milestone after this, your chances of recurrence are way lower. The, your chances of recurrence are way higher in the first five years. They're way higher in like the first two years. I've already made it past that. And now I've made it past three years. So like, I only have two more years to get to five. Oh, this is bad lighting, but I don't care because I'm sitting, you may be wondering, Samantha, you're like totally healthy now. What's gonna happen with this channel that's basically all about cancer? Let me tell you. <laughs> there are things that I haven't even talked about that had to do with my cancer journey that I didn't have time to talk about. Like, there are things that I have written down from when I was on treatment I haven't even made videos about. I have like lists and lists of things that I can still talk about on this channel that I want to share that I think will be helpful kind of me explaining the things that I went through, um, some tips for people going through the same thing, just me reflecting on my experience and like my thoughts at the time. I have written down all this stuff about being on Taxol chemotherapy. I have absolutely no videos about Taxol. I think I have a vlog. I have one vlog from getting Taxol chemotherapy, but nothing that has me like talking about really in depth about the side effects. There's so many things that I can talk about still on this channel that I kind of want to so this channel is still staying around for sure. But, you know, Gray and I are going to be moving to Alaska. There's still gonna be cancer stuff, obviously. Still going to have to find an oncologist 
in Alaska. That's not gonna really be fun. I'm not really looking forward to having to like switch my entire medical people around. Um, I'll still need to get scans in Alaska um, and all that. But you know, also we're just gonna be doing some fun things in Alaska. For fun things like that, you know, us living our lives, being in Alaska, doing fun Alaska things. <laughs> Probably mostly be on that other channel. But obviously I still have so many more things to say on this channel. So this channel is going to stick around. I'm just saying if you want to stay updated in my life, probably follow that other channel. But if you don't care about that and you only care about the cancer stuff, just, just follow this channel. That's fine too. I think that's all I have to say. I'm sorry this video was really weird and how it was formatted. I don't even know if I'm saying words anymore. I, I really just need to go back to sleep, honestly. Subscribe! Yeah, that's all. Bye.